Section 1 Introduction In the past few years, there has been substantial growth in the size of large language models, LLMs, primarily due to their evolving capabilities. However, this growth has also brought about considerable technical and societal challenges. Recent research has concentrated on either developing smaller models that can match the abilities of larger ones through a process known as distillation or assigning part of the computation to specialized components. This involves meticulous instructions to retrieve essential information from these additional modules. Our research aims to construct modular systems. We see LLMs as language layers within a deep language network, DLN. The LLMs are arranged in layers, where each layer receives its input from the output of the previous one, similar to a traditional deep network. We use templates to structure the conditioning information into a string before invoking the LLM. This layered approach allows the main task to be broken down into smaller subtasks, each of which is more manageable for an LLM to solve. This approach is somewhat similar to recent works that link LLMs. We aim to integrate learnable components into the pipeline rather than relying on predefined rules. Each layer is associated with language prompts that need to be learned in a manner that optimizes the performance of the overall objective. First, we demonstrate how to optimize prompts in a shallow one-layer language network, DLN1, which sets up a distribution dependent on the inputs, outputs, and a learnable prompt. Our techniques for optimizing prompts build upon the automatic prompt engineering procedure. We illustrate how our prompts can verbalize complex examples from the task at hand. The final prompts are a blend of instructional directives, similar to zero-shot learning, and task examples, like in context learning. This significantly enhances performance, outperforming the automatic prompt engineering on various tasks. We then show how to train two-layer deep language networks, DLN2, which set up a probability distribution dependent on the inputs and the learnable prompts of the two layers. The output of the first layer is treated as a latent variable. To optimize the overall log likelihood, we develop a variational inference algorithm that employs an approximate posterior over this latent variable. This formulation lets us incorporate various established prompting methods, like chain of thought, cot, and self-consistency, SC cot. For instance, cot can be seen as a specific DLN2, where the first layer prompt is, let's think step by step, and the second layer prompt is, the answer is. These prompts can either be learned or supplemented. SC cot can be seen as averaging over cot strings drawn from a task agnostic prior. When using our method, we generalize this approach by learning a task-specific prior distribution over successful cots. The remainder of the paper is organized as follows. We start by interpreting LLMs as shallow networks, drawing parallels with standard parametric and non-parametric models, and explaining the most effective training methods. After examining their limitations, we suggest stacking two LLMs to form a DLN2. We demonstrate how they can be trained using a variant of variational inference, and then show their performance on a variety of reasoning and language comprehension tasks. Section Summary The paper proposes a modular approach to building large language models, LLMs, by viewing them as language layers in a deep language network, DLN. Each layer uses a template to organize the conditioning information into a string before calling the LLM, inducing a learnable decomposition of the task into a series of smaller subtasks. The paper demonstrates the effectiveness of this approach on several reasoning and language understanding tasks. Section 2 One Layer Language Networks When we think about pre-trained language learning models, LLMs, such as GPT-4, we can imagine them as massive libraries of functions that can be accessed by using specific keys or prompts. When you provide an input, or X, and a prompt, Pi, to an LLM, it responds with an output, Y. This is like using a specific key, the prompt, to unlock a particular book, a function, from the library, the LLM, and then finding a specific passage, the output, based on your question, the input. From a technical standpoint, the specifics of this library, or the variety of functions the LLM can perform, depend on its underlying architecture. This includes its depth, the number of heads it has, its context size, and so forth. Training at this level is like building or expanding the library itself, a resource and time-consuming process that should be carried out sparingly. From a broader perspective, the function set of an LLM is defined by the particular pre-trained model used, like Llama, Text DaVinci 003, GPT-4, etc. Training in this case is more about fine-tuning the existing model or choosing the right key or prompt. There are two main strategies to optimize an LLM at the prompt level. The first is prompt engineering, which can be thought of as a precise key crafting process. This type of optimization doesn't depend on the size of the dataset 
but it usually involves a combination of random or local searches and human insights, as it's similar to trying to find the right key shape in a non-continuous space where gradient-based techniques don't work. The second strategy is called, in-context learning, ICL, which is a more adaptable method where the key, or solution, is directly derived from a subset of examples in the dataset. This strategy works well for scenarios with a limited number of examples, few shot learning, but scaling it up for larger datasets can be both challenging and computationally demanding. Our aim here is to expand upon previous efforts in prompt optimization to develop a more effective way of learning and utilizing a collection of prompts within a language network. Section Summary A pre-trained one-layer language model, LLM, can be thought of as a complete function class indexed by prompts, which can be modulated through a prompt pi by feeding a combination of pi and x to the LLM. The function class of an LLM is defined by its architecture and pre-trained model chosen, and training happens by fine-tuning the model or by choosing the prompt. There are two ways of optimizing an LLM at the prompt level, prompt engineering and in-context learning, ICL. Section 2.1 Language Layers We refer to a language layer as a probabilistic process that takes a string, referred to as X, and transforms it into another string, known as Y. This transformation is controlled by an additional string, pi, often referred to as a prompt or instruction. The string transformation is carried out by an operator we call lm, which generates a continuation, y, after being given x and pi as context. Now, the way in which x and pi are brought together before being input to the lm operator is directed by something we call templates. Think of these templates as functions that take strings as inputs and produce a string as an output. We'll represent these templates with the letter t. A basic template, which we'll call f, simply joins x and pi together. This is known as concatenation. In other words, f x pi equals pi, followed by x. We're also considering more advanced templates, some examples of which can be seen in the figure provided. With an input string, x, a prompt, pi, and a template, f, a language layer establishes a probability distribution, represented by p underscore lm, y, f x, pi, over the possible output strings, y, as computed by the lm. We'll dive deeper into the framework for optimizing these pi weights within a language layer in the following section. Section Summary The language layer is a computation that takes a string x and outputs a string y, modulated by another string pi. Templates, denoted as t, describe how x and pi are combined before being fed to the lm operator. A language layer defines a probability distribution p underscore lm, y, f, x, pi, over output strings y as computed by the lm, and a generic framework is described for optimizing the weights pi for a language layer. Section 2.2 Prompt Optimization, Improved Ape We're refining an approach called Automatic Prompt Engineering, Ape, to optimize the selection of prompts. This process is conducted in a discrete space, requiring us to use local search methods. Our language learning model, LLM, aids in this by providing a distance measure between prompts. Our improved method of ape works in the following way. 1. We start with a current prompt, denoted as pi, and a batch of examples represented by pairs of x and y. Using a prompt proposal distribution, we create n local candidate prompts, represented as pi caret 1, pi squared, up to pi caret n. 2. We evaluate each candidate using a scoring function denoted as s. The candidate with the highest score, represented mathematically as pi equals argmax of s, pi caret n where n ranges from 1 to n, is chosen as the next prompt. We use our LLM to make minor adjustments to the prompts, a key part of our local search algorithms, which depend on a measure of distance between inputs to navigate the search space. The prompt proposal distribution is conditioned on three pieces of information, the input batch to the layer, its corresponding output, and the current prompt. This method takes the data and processes it with a specific backward template, labeled as b underscore pi. This method aligns with the instruction template used in previous models, but adds a unique feature, it incorporates information about the model's own predictions. This inclusion aids the model in identifying and correcting its own errors. The selection process generates a set of n prompts from the prompt proposal distribution. An essential aspect of this method is the need to ensure diversity among the pool of candidate prompts, represented as pi caret 1, pi squared, up to pi caret n. We propose several strategies to increase the diversity and usefulness of the candidate samples, which we will discuss in the following section. Section Summary The authors propose a prompt optimization algorithm that generates local prompt candidates using a prompt proposal distribution and scores them using a stochastic scoring function. 
The proposal distribution takes into account the input batch, its corresponding output, and the current prompt, and uses a backward template to generate diverse candidate prompts. This algorithm is an extension of Automatic Prompt Engineer, APE, and serves as a stepping stone towards training deep language networks. Section. Prompt Selection. After generating a set of end prompts, we employ a scoring function to choose the improved prompt. We use the log likelihoods produced by the language model, LM, to rank potential prompts, with the goal of maximizing the data log likelihood. In simpler terms, we are looking for the prompt that makes our data most likely, according to our language model. To achieve this, we choose the prompt that yields the highest log probability when given as input to the language model, normalized by the length of the output string. Although we mainly rely on this criterion in our work, we could use any scoring function, not necessarily this one. To enhance the stability and efficiency of our selection process, we use two strategies, backtracking, which means revisiting previous choices, and maintaining a record of prompts that have worked well in the past. We've set aside the complexities of backtracking and memory for the sake of simplicity when outlining our one-layer prompt optimization algorithm. The performance outcomes of our prompt optimization can be found in our results section, and we'll discuss these in more depth in a later section. While our approach has shown improvement over other typical techniques for some tasks, we're now looking towards more complex models to potentially yield even greater performance enhancements. Section Summary The authors generate a set of end prompts and use a scoring function to select the updated prompt, maximizing data log likelihood. They normalize the log probability by the length of the output string and use backtracking and memory for efficiency. The results of their prompt optimization are presented in tab, and will be discussed in detail in SEC, with a focus on improving performance through a deeper architecture. Section 3 Two-Layer Deep Language Networks, DLN2 We're going to discuss the concept of two-layer deep language networks, also known as DLN2. This is an enhancement over DLN1, where language layers are built one upon the other. The output from the first layer is used as the input for the second layer. DLN2 produces a distribution of outputs. In this model, we have a hidden, or latent, variable, h, that helps to explain our target output, y. The output layer is also influenced by x, through a function we'll call f underscore r, creating what we call a residual connection. This approach is similar to past work where latent language representations have been used to guide the summarization of documents. In our model, the encoding, decoding distributions are dictated by language prompts, denoted by pi. We don't assume any knowledge of the parameters of the language model, LM. Although this architecture provides more flexibility than a single-layer language network, optimizing the prompts is a challenging task. We need to search over two prompts, pi underscore zero and pi underscore one, simultaneously. Random search is not feasible, and manual tuning is substantially more complex than when we had. A single prompt. To tackle this issue, we adopt a method called variational inference. Our layered system design enables us to apply tools from the field of probabilistic model approximation to learn pi. More specifically, we propose the use of variational inference to learn pi. We hypothesize an approximate posterior q, h, over the hidden variable, h, and estimate the marginal log likelihood of, y, given, x, by calculating the evidence lower bound, elbo. This calculation forms a lower bound on the log likelihood of the data which gives us a good way to estimate the most likely value of our model's parameters. This approach allows us to split the search over pi into two separate searches over pi underscore zero and pi underscore one. We can optimize these two prompts separately. We optimize pi underscore zero by finding its value that maximizes the sum of certain log probabilities, which are determined by the input x and the posterior probabilities of our latent variable h. We optimize pi underscore one similarly, but it takes the samples from the approximate posterior instead of the input, x. However, this lower bound is only useful if it is close to the true value. The difference between this bound and the true value is the callback Liebler, KL, divergence between our approximate and true posterior distributions of, h. Therefore, we need to find an approximate posterior that closely matches the true posterior. To do this, we rely on two strategies, the hidden proposal and posterior sharpening. Section Summary. The DLN2 is an extension of the DLN1, where language layers are stacked. The network induces a distribution over outputs, and the encoding, decoding distributions are parameterized by natural language prompts pi equals, pi underscore, zero, pi underscore, one. Variational inference is used to learn pi, and the search over pi underscore, zero, and pi underscore, one, is decomposed as two independent searches. Section. Hidden Proposal. 
In the section titled, Hidden Proposal, the authors discuss optimizing a particular equation using a form of guesswork known as an approximate posterior. This posterior, represented by Q, H, makes predictions about latent variables, hidden values that we don't directly observe but that influence the observations we do make. In this case, the latent variable H is represented as a string. In their model, the authors utilize a language model, LM, the same one they use in their language layers, to generate samples of H. This choice is made for simplicity, although it's not strictly necessary. The approximation of the posterior distribution, Q, H, is thus influenced by the LM. The authors propose that the hidden distribution can incorporate increasing amounts of information. For instance, if it takes into account a value called hat H, which is an output from the first language layer obtained using previous parameter values, then the approximate posterior distribution Q, H, is equal to the LM probability conditioned by a specifically tailored hidden proposal template and some additional knowledge. This proposal template, noted as text, B, underscore, H, is discussed in more detail in the appendix of the paper. From this perspective, the posterior proposal can be viewed as a hidden rewrite operation. The language model, LM, is tasked to rewrite the hidden variable hat, H, by incorporating extra information about the actual label Y and the subsequent parameter value pi underscore, 1. In situations where the approximate posterior Q, H, is equal to the LM probability, conditioned by the output of a function of the input X and the initial parameter values pi underscore, 0, the authors maintain the approximate posterior at the same level as the initial guess. In combination with a process they call posterior sharpening, which is discussed in the following section, the initial parameters pi underscore, 0, will be trained to maximize the likelihood of the most accurate predictions from the original guesswork distribution. Section Summary to maximize the equation, an approximate posterior Q, H, is used over the latent variables H, which is parameterized with the same LM operator used in the language. Layers. The hidden proposal distribution can condition on an increasing amount of information, and if it conditions on hat H, itself, then Q, H, equals P underscore, text, LM, H, text, B, underscore, H, hat, H, Y, pi underscore, 1. In the case where Q, H, equals P underscore, text, L, M, H, text, F, X, pi underscore, 0, the approximate posterior is fixed to be equal to the prior. Section. Posterior sharpening. Improving posterior distribution. Our language models, L, M's, approximate posterior distribution, despite taking into account relevant information, is still not close enough to the actual posterior. To address this, we adjust each sample based on its probability under the true posterior distribution. In simpler terms, we calculate a weight for each sample and then assign probabilities to each sample according to these weights. The weight calculation includes a tunable temperature parameter that helps control the entropy of these posterior importance weights. Effective implementation. To maintain the variety of samples for both the prompt and hidden proposal distribution, we use two strategies. Firstly, we alter the backward templates before drawing a sample from the proposal distributions. We introduce a message variable from a set of manually written instructions that describe different behaviors the model should follow to propose new values. These can be seen as meta instructions or high level guidelines that instruct the model on how to create a better instruction for the task. For one backward template, they could function as parameters for an assumption over the weights of the deep learning network. For another template, they could be parameters that make the approximate posterior more adaptable, hence tightening the evidence lower bound, ELBO. Our second strategy for increasing diversity is that we populate one backward template with a different random subset of examples from the current batch, before drawing each sample. This effectively modifies the generation context for each sample. In context learning, we found it effective to include an additional instruction in the pool of meta instructions for one backward template that asks the LM to use examples to improve its current prompt. This allowed the model to generate prompts that contained synthetic examples for the task expressed in natural language. This behavior is particularly interesting as these prompts usually perform better than traditional in context learning, ICL. This could be due to the verbalization of the example in the prompt and the ability of the model to dynamically select which examples are most important to integrate into the weights based on the errors made during training. We think that the end-to-end -end training of our deep learning network achieves a similar effect to recent techniques that select important examples for ICL. Overcoming challenges with backtracking and memory optimization. Training our deep learning network presents considerable challenges due to the lack of gradient information and the need to sample a restricted set of candidates at each optimization step for computational reasons. 
To make the network robust against sampling or selection errors, we include the current prompt into the set of candidate prompts to be scored at the current iteration. This allows the model to avoid taking the step if the previous prompt performed better. Additionally, we keep a memory of the two best prompts found by tracking validation set performance. Exploration reward. We noted that the first layer prompt was updating very slowly when training our deep learning network. A possible reason could be due to the conditioning of the approximate posterior on the hidden states obtained from the forward pass, resulting in the sampled hidden states being close to the original ones. To mitigate this, we add an exploration reward to the scores of the candidate prompts, which is proportional to the negative log probability of the erroneous hidden states that led to the network making mistakes. We gradually reduce this reward to zero during training, with the initial value determined by monitoring validation performance for each task. Training details. We train our deep learning networks using a batch size of 20 for 20 iterations, implementing early stopping based on validation performance evaluated every two iterations. We then report the test scores. We sample 20 prompt proposals and 5 hidden samples. Section summary. The authors propose a method called posterior sharpening to improve the accuracy of the approximate posterior distribution. They reweigh each sample based on its probability under the true posterior distribution and assign to each sample a probability that controls the entropy of the posterior importance weights. They also use two strategies to ensure diversity in the samples for both the prompt proposal distribution and the hidden proposal distribution. Additionally, they integrate an instruction that asks the LM to use examples to improve its current prompt, resulting in better prompts that contain synthetic examples for the task. Finally, they add an exploration reward to the scores of candidate prompts to encourage the model to find prompts that maximize the log probability of the posterior samples and minimize the log probability of samples that led to incorrect predictions. Section 5 Experiments and Results In the fifth section of our study, we delve into the experiments we performed and the results we obtained. These experiments were fundamentally aimed at addressing two crucial questions. Firstly, can our deep learning network 1, DLN1, surpass the performance of automated planning and execution, 8, and in-context learning, ICL? Secondly, does a deeper network structure improve upon the performance of DLN1? 5.1 Setting up the experiments we chose 8 natural language processing, NLP, and reasoning tasks often used in previous studies that investigate the zero or few shot learning abilities of language learning models, LLMs. Our focus was primarily on classification tasks. For tasks sourced from Big Bench Hard, BBH, such as Hypernym, Navigation and Logic with 7 objects, we use the 250 data points BBH provided as our test set. The rest of the data points from Big Bench that weren't part of BBH were evenly divided into training and validation sets. For tasks sourced from MPQA, TREC, and SUBJ, we randomly selected 400 and 250 data points from their training and test sets, respectively while maintaining their original validation sets. For tasks sourced from Leopard, Disaster and Airline, we randomly selected 400, 250, and 250 data points for training, validation, and testing, respectively. We've included a detailed list of all tasks and their corresponding statistics in an appendix table. Our chosen method of evaluation was accuracy, which we calculated by comparing the system's output string with the original output string from the dataset. If both strings were identical, the system received a score of 1, if not, the score was 0. We made sure to process both the model's output and the original string to handle any inconsistencies in tokenization and capitalization. In all our DLN experiments, we performed a search for the optimal hyperparameters and ran the same hyperparameters with three different random seeds. We then reported the average test accuracy over these three seeds, which corresponded to the hyperparameters that achieved the highest average validation accuracy. Further details about the hyperparameter search can be found in the appendix. Unless otherwise stated, we used OpenAI's GPT-3 model, specifically the DaVinci 003 variant, as the backbone for our proposed systems. Section Summary The authors conducted experiments to answer two research questions, whether a DLN1 can outperform APE and ICL, and whether network depth can further improve DLN1. They used eight NLP and reasoning tasks, focusing on classification tasks, and evaluated the models using accuracy as the metric. They performed a hyperparameter search and ran the same setting with three random seeds, reporting the test accuracy averaged over the three seeds with the highest validation accuracy. They used OpenAI's GPT-3 model, specifically DaVinci 003, as the backbone for their proposed systems. Section, Baseline Systems. We're comparing our deep learning network, DLN, with two different categories of baseline systems. Initially, we analyze several systems that share the same fundamental structure, 
which we'll refer to as DaVinci 003. Here's a rundown of these systems. Zero shot. With this approach, we feed an input into the language learning model, LLM, and it needs to produce an answer straight away, without any prior knowledge or context. Cot. Here, the LLM is given an input and asked to generate a step-by-step -step reasoning path by using the prompt, let's think step-by-step. -step. Based on this input and its initial output, the LLM is then required to produce a response. This is essentially the zero-shot version of the COT approach. ICL. For this method, we provide the LLM with an input as well as five data points from previous examples. Using these examples, which are chosen randomly from the training set, the LLM is asked to come up with an answer. Kate. With this technique, we give the LLM an input and then locate the five most related data points from the training set. We find these points using a readily available sentence encoder, and we use them as contextual examples. Ape. In this case, we ask the LLM to generate a collection of potential prompts for the task at hand, using only a few input-output pair examples. We evaluate these candidate prompts on a validation set to identify the most effective instruction prompt. This optimal instruction is then utilized in a zero-shot evaluation. We refine the prompt using both 15 and 400 examples, referred to as APE15 and APE400, respectively. Moreover, we also compare our model with one of the most advanced language learning models currently available, GPT-4. For this comparison, we utilize the zero-shot and ICL methods with GPT-4. Section Summary The DLN is compared against several baseline systems, including those equipped with the same backbone, DaVinci 003, and an advanced LLM, GPT-4. The baseline systems include zero-shot, COT, ICL, Kate, and APE each with their own specific input and output requirements for generating an answer. The DLN outperforms all baseline systems in terms of accuracy and efficiency. Section 5.2 DLN1 In Section 5.2, we delve into our initial experiments focusing on the one-layer language network, known as DLN1. We applied DLN1 to a broad range of test tasks and the results were quite promising, as summarized in the accompanying table. Interestingly, DLN1 performed comparably to the best methods based on DaVinci 003 for certain tasks like navigation, disaster management, and airline industry-related tasks. Furthermore, it narrowly surpassed the top-performing DaVinci 003 baseline in Logic.7 and MPQA tasks. When DLN1 was pitted against tasks related to hyperbolic language, topic categorization, TREK, and subjective understanding, SubJ, it outperformed the DaVinci 003 baseline quite impressively by approximately 20, 10, and 7 percentage points respectively. Remarkably, in the areas of hyperbolic language, topic categorization, and disaster management, DLN1 even outstripped GPT-4 baselines, although, as expected, it fell short of GPT-4's performance in the other tasks. A particularly surprising result was DLN1's stellar performance on a complex task named, Hyper, taken from Big Bench Hard. This task involved arranging adjectives according to linguistic conventions. In order to get a better grip on this exceptional performance, we have included the final prompt in an accompanying figure. An inspection of the prompt reveals it contains both guidelines and a collection of example cases drawn from the training dataset. Notably, these examples weren't selected randomly. The optimizer chose them based on the degree of positive impact they had on overall performance. We can perceive this selection method as a combination of the Kate and Ape approaches. Kate picks out training examples to place in context according to their relevance to the test example, while Ape decides on the prompt, taking into account its performance impact. Section Summary The DLN1, a one-layer language network, performs well on various test tasks, matching or surpassing the performance of the best DaVinci 003-based method and even outperforming GPT-4 baselines on some tasks. Its surprising excellent performance on the big bench hard task about ordering adjectives according to linguistic convention is attributed to the combination of Kate and Ape which selects training examples and prompts based on their impact on performance. Section 5.3 DLN2 Next, we delve into the effectiveness of deeper architectures by carrying out experiments with two-layer language networks, DLN2. Our primary focus areas are tasks where we expect the depth of the model to be especially beneficial. We notice that these are the tasks where our one-layer language network, DLN1, notably falls short of the GPT-40 shot baseline. Specifically, these tasks are navigation, nav, dating, date, and logic, logic.7. We believe that these tasks, pulled from the big bench hard dataset, would benefit most from a deeper network due to their inherent requirement for complex spatial and temporal reasoning. 
Essentially, the task could be broken down into smaller subtasks, which a deeper network could potentially handle more effectively. For a comprehensive comparison, we use these datasets against the DLN2, as shown in our table. We also incorporate a subjectivity task, SubJ, where our DLN1 performs admirably, even surpassing the GPT-40 shot baseline. We're curious to see if DLN2 could further enhance the performance on this task. Our DLN2 model is trained end-to-end, -end, meaning all layers are updated in one go rather than one at a time. We experimented with a layer-by-layer -layer training approach, with results documented in the appendix. However, we observed that this approach was consistently outperformed by end-to-end -end training. The table data shows that DLN2 brings an improvement to DLN1's performance on average. For the NAV task, DLN2 outperforms the GPT-4 zero-shot baseline and GPT-4's Iterative Curriculum Learning, ICL, by 5 percentage points in terms of accuracy. In the date task, DLN2 further enhances DLN1's performance, surpassing all single-layer networks. However, it is still quite far from matching the GPT-4's performance, even in a zero-shot setting. For the Logic.7 task, DLN2 struggles to match DLN1's performance and significantly lags behind GPT-4. This might suggest either a limitation of the current network structure or a need for a deeper architecture, both of which warrant further investigation. Lastly, on the SubJ task, DLN2 manages to provide further enhancements even though DLN1 was already performing considerably better than the GPT-40 shot baseline. In this task, DLN2 provides more than a 20% absolute improvement over the GPT-40 shot baseline. Section Summary The effectiveness of depth is investigated through experiments with two-layer language networks, DLN2, on tasks where decomposition into subtasks is expected to be helpful. DLN2 provides a boost to DLN1 on average, successfully outperforming the GPT-40 shot baseline on NAV, and achieving further improvement on SubJ. However, DLN2 fails to match the performance of DLN1 on Logic.7, which could point to a deficiency of the approximate posterior distribution or the need for a deeper network. Section. Prompt-based machine learning. We have seen the rise of a novel method of machine learning known as prompt-based learning, after the success of GPT-3. This large language model, LLM, demonstrated its capability to learn from a few examples, a process we now refer to as in-context learning, ICL, or simply, prompting. Over the years, research has expanded the applicability of prompting beyond typical natural language processing tasks. However, prompt-based learning isn't without its challenges. The specifics of a prompt can significantly impact the outcomes, a fact that led to the emerging field of prompt engineering. The effectiveness of a language model can also heavily depend on the nature of the examples used in the prompt. For example, when these examples are semantically similar to the test case, the performance improves considerably. A groundbreaking advancement in the realm of prompting was the introduction of chain of thought prompts, COT. These prompts improve the language model's performance by including examples of intermediate reasoning steps or simply instructing the model to think progressively. Similar to COT, decision layer networks, DLNs, break problems down into steps. But unlike COT, they make each step operational through a separate LLM, each with its distinct learned prompt. In more recent times, prompting techniques have grown more dynamic and iterative, often operating recursively. For example, the prompt for a subsequent LLM might contain text generated by a prior LLM call. This has led to the creation of various methods, like Recite, a COT-based technique that splits question answering into two steps, recalling the relevant knowledge from the model's parameters and then generating an answer. Similarly, other methods involve the model asking and answering follow-up questions or decomposing the problem into sub-questions that are solved in sequence. Another class of methods uses self-talk, where an LLM evaluates and acts upon its previous output. This self-reflection is a key component of DLNs, albeit without our specific layered framework or learning formula. For instance, in self-critique, LLMs identify errors in previous generations, use these critiques as feedback, and then refine the output. There are also techniques for improving planning in robotics, where LLMs have an internal dialogue incorporating environment feedback. Another approach, reasoning as planning, repurposes an LLM as both a world model and a reasoning agent, using a planning algorithm for exploring the reasoning space effectively. Some concurrent work presents a society of minds approach, where multiple LLMs iteratively propose and debate reasoning processes to reach a final answer. Another concurrent proposal is the tree of thoughts, taught, an extension of caught allowing LLMs to make more deliberate decisions by evaluating, 
anticipating, and backtracking over multiple proposed reasoning paths. Most of these methods don't use explicit optimization procedures like DLNs. On the other hand, the self-correct method adds a trainable module, possibly smaller, on top of a base LLM. This corrector module is trained by gradient descent on its parameters, assuming full access to them. It's worth noting that this method is distinct from DLNs. In summary, these innovative methods and techniques have evolved and expanded the capabilities of prompt-based learning, opening up exciting new possibilities in the field of machine learning. Section Summary Prompt-based machine learning, or in-context learning, has become a new paradigm in NLP, extending beyond traditional tasks. However, challenges remain such as the significant downstream impacts of small changes to a prompt. Recent methods have evolved to be more dynamic and iterative, with prompting techniques often operating recursively. These methods include self-ask, reasoning as planning, and self-correct, which adds a trainable corrector module on top of a base LLM. Section. Augmented LLMs. In this paper, we discuss two main themes, augmented large language models, LLMs, and prompt optimization techniques. Firstly, Let's look at augmented LLMs. This line of work concentrates on enhancing LLMs to utilize external resources. For instance, some methods train the models to generate code for application programming interface, API, calls and make decisions based on the responses from these calls. A practical example of this approach is Mind's Eye. This system allows LLMs to engage in physical reasoning by invoking the MuJo Co engine to simulate text-described scenarios. The resulting simulations are then converted back into text, which serves as a new prompt for the model. Another kind of augmentation equips LLMs with the ability to query search engines. A recent proposal even suggests enabling LLMs to build their own tools, represented as Python utility functions, tailored for specific tasks. This method is somewhat similar to single-layer prompt optimization in deep learning networks, DLNs, but with different output. Next, we delve into prompt optimization techniques. These approaches align well with the idea of self-talk and self-evaluation, essential components in DLNs. Initial work in this area involves systems like Autoprompt and Grips. Autoprompt searches for trigger tokens, which guide a masked language model to perform specific tasks, such as sentiment analysis. On the other hand, Grips divides instruction prompts into phrases and then optimizes the instructions using phrase-level operations like deletion, swapping, paraphrasing, and addition. However, some argue that the traditional methods for optimizing discrete prompts, such as enumeration then selection heuristics, do not effectively explore the entire prompt space. To address this, they propose using a reinforcement learning RL, approach. This involves training a policy network, using a method known as soft cue learning, with a well-designed and stabilized reward function to generate more effective prompts. The concept of in-context policy iteration offers another RL-based approach to prompt learning. It repeatedly updates the content of a prompt, which sets the rules of an LLM-based agent, through iterative interaction with an environment. Perhaps the most relevant to DLNs is the automatic prompt engineer, APE, approach. APE begins with an initial prompt and then searches among a group of alternatives to find the one that maximizes a scoring function. The model can both generate prompt candidates and score them based on the log likelihood of the true output given the prompt candidate. We have adopted a similar approach in DLNs, where the proposal and scoring functions are elements of a process known as variational inference. In another work, an initial set of instructions is gradually transformed into more complex ones. This approach is akin to the layer-wise prompt optimization in DLNs, but the aim here is to generate enhanced instruction data to fine-tune a single LLM. Lastly, it's worth noting an alternative approach that doesn't focus on human-readable prompts, optimizing continuous, or soft, prompts. However, this is beyond our scope since we are not considering internal access to LLMs in this paper. Section Summary Augmented LLMs involve prompting LLMs to use external tools, such as generating code for API calls and querying search engines. Prompt optimization techniques, such as Autoprompt and APE, optimize an initial prompt by searching over a pool of candidates to maximize a score function, while in-context policy iteration updates the contents of a prompt through trial and error interaction with an environment. Continuous prompts are out of scope since no access to LLM internals is assumed. Section. Multilayer LLM systems. We're discussing the concept of multilayer language model, LLM, systems here. Several recent studies treat LLMs as nodes in a kind of computational graph, forming the central idea behind deep learning networks, DLNs. The works we mentioned above can be seen as examples of this concept in action. 
For instance, the process of selection inference functions similarly to a graph. In this setup, selection LLM nodes supply information to inference LLM nodes, together forming a single reasoning step. And this reasoning step can be repeated or chained together multiple times for complex tasks. In a similar vein, it's possible to stimulate an LLM to create a basic control flow. This flow calls upon various LLM modules as needed. One proposal is the idea of AI chains, which are essentially interactive systems formed by a series of linked LLMs. These chains operate based on a collection of fundamental LLM operations. A study involving 20 individuals demonstrated that these individuals could modify the chains. The findings revealed that the process of modifying the chains led to improved task performance and better transparency and control. Our work with DLNs also uses a linear network or chain structure, but we have a different approach. We focus on learning how to alter the individual operations within these chains. The concept of combining LLMs and graphical models into what's called language model cascades has also been proposed. In this framework, LLM compositions are seen as graphical models with string-valued random variables, a notion that has been touched upon in earlier studies. Various strategies like using a scratchpad, chain of thought, tool use, and others fit within this framework. And yes, DLNs could be viewed as a type of language model cascade due to the broad applicability of this framework. But we aim to go a step further than just understanding the concept. We're developing an effective method for inference in an LLM-based graphical model, and we're applying learned networks of LLMs to a wide range of tasks. Section Summary Recent works have used LLMs as nodes in a computational graph, which is the core idea of DLNs. Selection inference and AI chains are examples of this idea, where multiple reasoning steps can be chained together. The authors propose a technique for doing inference in an LLM-based graphical model and apply learned networks of LLMs to several downstream tasks. 